Good morning. It's so good to be with you. I hope you're well, and I hope that you're finding these prayers and the scripture lesson from Romans and the different music we have for today helpful on your journey of faith. As I look at that passage from Roman, all, Romans, always with Paul, it's, it feels like it's a mouthful of words. And yet, in and amongst all of those words, some themes bubble up. One of them for me, and the center for today's meditation, is how it's all binding, that there are ties that bind. When we think about that, sometimes it's hard to escape certain images, certain feelings and emotions that well up around being bound or tied. And I don't mean as a prisoner would be, but maybe maybe just a little bit like that in terms of our souls, our emotions, because we've all experienced, right? All of us have experienced what it means to be tied down, tied up in knots. Maybe it's to a mortgage, right? Or a car payment or to old college debt. Maybe you feel limited, bound, restricted, constricted by a chronic illness or a bad relationship or maybe misspent youth trapped by old bad habits or past sins, tied, constricted, bound, producing feelings and emotions of guilt, maybe even hopelessness. Or maybe, maybe, and especially during these days, right? Maybe, maybe just a little bit tired or weary, all of which, and so much more, can bring impatience, can squelch hope. But the English language, right? We talk about this a lot. The English language is a beautiful, beautiful thing because it helps to add perspective because there are things, right? So many wonderful, beautiful things to be tied to, to be bound up within. Things that are life-giving, things that are transformative, that empower and fulfill, that stretch our souls. In fact, again to use the words of Paul, it is with eager longing that we join in, that we participate in one of the most powerful concepts in all of Scripture and faith, covenant, a binding, a tying to and with our lives and God's Spirit, life-giving, transformative, good news this kind of binding with eager longing, as Paul puts it, to be the creation, to be the children of God, faithful and true, to be the creation who embraces the first fruits of the Spirit by living and sharing and bearing life to others, these very same gifts that are already, and that's the kicker, that are already given to us, that are already part of the covenant that God brings to the table, a tie that binds, that God shares. We don't have to create these gifts on our own, these first fruits. We don't have to make them up on the fly. They already exist and are at our disposal. God-given. Things like first fruits, like joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Nine beautiful first fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Gifts. God hands to us on the first day of our creation, ready to use and put to work. I'm thinking <clears throat> that on the list, right, on the list of things that we all hold in common during these strange and difficult days of pandemic, is the desire, is the willingness, in some for, form or fashion, to try something new, to do something we've put off. Even after we've, or maybe especially because we don't want to continue doing the same old thing, or we believe that it is time to stretch our wings. Maybe find a new author. Maybe clean out the closets, right? Or fix the deck. Or exercise more. Whatever it may be, we stretch our wings. We plant a seed. Maybe, just maybe, some of these new adventures this newfound willingness, this eager longing is also something that can be gospel-centered, searching out deeper devotional patterns and practices, binding, therefore, our heart and mind and soul to a new discipline of faith, right? Maybe we are wanting finding this need to have a greater understanding of what God is doing and asking of us as the creation, as children of faith, under the category of social and racial injustice. Stretch those wings. Plant that seed. For this time in which we are all living is first and foremost god given time. That's how I'm choosing to look at it. These days, not as a delay, not as a pause or a simple disruption, but a gift. Like that fruit, a gift that's meant to be planted and grow and blossom and flourish, finding ways for our roots to sink in deeper, to be more fully connected and bound and tied to a soil, a source of strength and encouragement that will bear good fruit. And let's remember what Paul told the church at Rome, that when the way gets rough, that on those days when our souls are weary or our voice is cracked and dry, have no fear. For the Spirit is with us. And this is the beautiful, beautiful part that even and especially when we are tired and weary, this very Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. Can you imagine a more poignant, a more beautiful image than that? God is holding our hand just like you do, just like I do for a troubled child or grandchild. God is holding our hand. God's Spirit is gifting us with this time and this space so that we might grow, not just to get through these days, 
but to flourish within them. With eager longing, we enter into such a covenant. We bind our hearts and pledge our souls. We tie our present with God's unimaginably good future. And we sing, we sing at the top of our lungs, Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art, thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Let's be good gardeners this day. Be good caretakers of the gift God has given so that we might bear fruit. We might use these days as a gift. To God be the glory this day and forevermore. And may you feel God's blessing at work in your life. Amen.